Hello, my name is Teresa, I'm a comic artist and illustrator and today I'm gonna tell you the five foundations to get a decent illustration. This is basic stuff that anybody can do and will make your illustrations look a million times better and your drawings in general a million times better. So what are these five? Here. First have an idea, then a basic plan, then reference, then the under drawing and then the sketch. And the under drawing I think is the actual key. Let's take for example these guys here. You can see the artist here, Kibitzer from DeviantArt. You can go visit this artist. And if you had this, if you could produce these basic uh, images, you could always draw on top of them with your own style, right? So it's not about style. It's not about anything other than knowing what you're doing, knowing what your plan is and what you're trying to uh, draw. And then all the specifics of style, anatomy etc you can figure those out as you draw um, the final version but that is not the important thing at all so you see just with that base we can probably create something interesting even if we don't know how to draw anybody could do it so how do you get to this basis basic drawing how do you make one of these basic drawings so let me tell you how I do it the first thing to make a drawing look good is an idea. This person that drew this obviously had an idea of what they wanted to draw. They wanted to draw these uh, profiles with a nose very simple and concentrate on the hair. That's the idea, that's the focus, that's why this person could execute this illustration. So be sure that before you put pen to paper, you have a very strong idea of what you want to accomplish. I'm going to show you the illustration I'm working on right now, which is like a samurai dog thing. This is where we are at the moment, I'm halfway through, and I can show you just quickly a future, the future, how this looks in the future when it's finished. So at the moment it's just finishing touches and little things that I need to do to make it look like a final piece. How do I arrive to this illustration? Well, very simple. The first thing I do, as I said, is the idea. The idea came because I was talking to the editor of the anthology in which this illustration is included. And we came up with this idea of the samurai dog with the that's a spirit behind the actual real dog. That's how the dog feels inside and the samurai dog is behind it, right? Uh, so that's the concept, that's the story we're telling and that's an important thing that I need to figure out. What am I trying to say with my illustration? What's the story behind my illustration? And even if it's something simple like this, you need to have that solid initial idea. You can do this by uh, writing down ideas, you can do it uh, by uh, brainstorming with a friend, or you can do a technique that I really like, that I learned on a course in Schoolism, that is doing mind maps. So I'm gonna show you how I do mind maps for more complex illustration. You start with like this basic idea. I wanna draw a frog. And why do I wanna draw a frog? Because frogs, uh, I want to draw an assassin frog. Ooh, and what does this assassin frog have? Uh, they have a dagger in one hand this is important and where are they like where are they uh, they the frog uh, the frog is in a tree the frog is in a tree uh, and you know you just go on with this idea what else is is there that is interesting um, uh, they the the facial expression uh, the facial expression is intense. You know, you just get this by writing it down and asking you questions. And we're talking about basic questions like, where are they? Why are they doing what they're doing? Who is doing the thing? How do they exactly look like? Or how are they gonna do this thing? Uh, what am I trying to say with this uh, illustration? By doing that, you come up with a solid plan. So it's like, okay, so it's a frog in a tree, blah, blah, blah. And you have all these elements that you want to include. And that's when you jump into um, what I call the, the shadows, um, which is this. It's basically, I outline shadows and I think about elements that are important. So I knew that the dog had to have a katana. I knew that I wanted that. So I put it like, oh, how can I emphasize that katana? So it can be like 
uh, crossing the the illustration. So just making those decisions in the shadow, um, the shadow uh, thing that I do. I don't know how to call this. Shadow puppets, shadow figures. I knew that I wanted the katana, and you know, for a while I was considering whether I wanted or not the the cape, the the, the yellow cape that he's wearing. And you know, once I had an idea of more or less what I wanted, I also started playing around with the concept. This is part of the preparation. I had to think about how does this dog look, what's his attitude, etc. So this was like a basic idea. This is just some sketches. If you look at the basis of it, it's just this. Some sketches that I did, and then I used the pencil tool, you know, colors, attitude, I figure out in another piece of paper. So once I have everything, like the basic idea of what I want, which is the, the figure, the, the character, everything is ready. And this, this was like a few days of work, actually. Once I know all of that, I jump on to the next step, which is my basic plan. So what, it, what was my basic plan? My basic plan was to have those figures and a quote. That was it. If I could fit the figures and I could fit the quote, I was happy. And I had the colors, I had everything. My basic plan is done. Then we move on to the reference. I don't know how to draw everything in the planet. So I had to go and find some reference for the dog and for the samurai. So if you look at this, this is the basic reference that I found. Obviously, I altered a lot of it. If you look at the final sketch and you look at the reference, it doesn't look exactly the same. I'm not copying, I'm not tracing. I'm just, you know, how does a katana look? How does a dog look, etc. Right? So don't go crazy, you're not copying, you don't need to find the perfect reference, you just need a reference for the elements that confuse you or you don't know how to draw. And Pinterest is great for that, by the way. After I find my reference, I start doing the underdrawing. I think the underdrawings for me are super messy. Uh, I don't know if any of this is going to make sense to anyone except for me, but uh, this is the underdrawing. Let me, where is it? Here. That's it. That's what I do. Uh, what I'm trying to figure out with this underdrawing is two things. Number one, the posture, the basic anatomy. So if you see like one part that really confused me about that reference was what's happening with the torso, you know, because it's not very clear. So I drew this little line torso and this underdrawing and this basic skeleton to know how it would all fit and this basic dog head. That's the underdrawing for it. It doesn't have to be super complicated, and after that, I am good to go with uh, the details. Maybe you will need more time for that, but I went straight from this here to this here, and from that to the final sketch, which is this one. So you see, there is a difference between the original sketch, if, you, if I zoom in, especially in the face, and the final sketch, right? I changed the eyes, I changed a little bit the expression, etc. But in essence, it's the same thing. I was just moving some lines left, right, center, etc. Have a clear idea, have a basic plan, use some reference, do a solid underdrawing, and then a sketch, and you're good to go. I hope that helped, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.